Hi everyone. Last time I talked about star reduction using Starnet++ and Photoshop and a few days after I made that video I downloaded and started testing uh, the latest beta release from Astro Pixel Processor. So that contains a star reduction tool. So I'm going to do a quick demo on that for this video just to show you what is coming down the pipeline. I, if you are a, an existing Astro Pixel processor user, I wouldn't necessarily download the beta to replace your main workflow at the moment. Uh, there are some bugs in it, which the development team are still working on. So uh, if you do download it, I would keep your existing Astro Pixel processor to do the workflow normally. Uh, the star reduction thing broadly works, and that's what I'm going to demo here today. Uh, there are still a, a few little glitches in it, and I'm sure the dev team will iron those out. So when this becomes an actual uh, production release from uh, Astro Pixel Processor, I'm just demonstrating what you're going to be able to expect. So what I'm going to do is look at um, this image, which has quite a few stars in it. It's a uh, uh, 75 minutes of hydrogen alpha data on the butterfly nebula and it can be a, I've chosen this because it can be a little bit challenging for star reduction because you have this bright star Seda uh, I think that's how it's pronounced I'm not sure if it's Seda, Sada um, I'll go with Seda uh, it, it's quite bright and it's it can be challenging for star reduction techniques so it's quite a good one to uh, to try and run it on. It's also got a uh, open star cluster here and it's got stars of varying sizes throughout the image. So uh, when you are using the new version of Astro Pixel Processor, you're gonna find that there is this star reducer uh, button. And uh, when you click that, it'll ask what image, uh, it normally defaults to the one that you've got on screen. Uh, do you want to import? So I'm just going to say yes. So that's now imported into the um, into the tool. Now it's got two tricks in its bag. One is star reduction and the other is star removal. Uh, so I'm going to start with the star removal to just demonstrate uh, that for you. Now I'm going to uh, just run a speed test between this and uh, Starnet++. Plus Plus. Uh, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that I have my CPU and GPU available to Starnet++. Plus Plus. So uh, most of the work gets offloaded to the GPU because Starnet++ Plus Plus can be quite a slow process, especially if you've got an older machine. Um, but it runs quite quickly on mine because I've got the GPU. And I'm just going to compare them for uh, the raw speed of the operation. Uh, as well as the uh, end result. So what I've got is uh, a, an input file for Starnet++, which is effectively what I've also got loaded into Astro Pixel Processor. And I'm gonna run the Starnet++ process on this, as well as the star reduction uh, process in APP. Um, so I'm just going to give Starnet++ a little bit of a, a head start uh, by clicking this icon. It's going to launch the process and kick it off. And I'm gonna start the APP process. Uh, now it's started to run Starnet++. So all I need to do is click remove stars and then click show stars reduced slash removed. And it's off and running. So we're gonna see just how quick this is compared to Starnet++. So it's almost there and that's it, it's done. Um, and Starnet++ is still running at 44%. Uh, so you can see straight away uh, that it's removed the stars. It's done a pretty good job um, on its default settings of removing SADA. Uh, obviously there's some uh, destruction there because of the halo around that star. Um, there's possibly one star up top which didn't get removed around the peripheries. Um, but it's done, a, it's done a good job. Uh, and Starnet++ is about to finish. So 
if I compare uh, these results, so here's two I ran earlier. Um, here on the right you have the output from Starnet++ and here on the left you have the output from Astro Pixel Processor. And you can see they've both done a good job, but Starnet++ really struggled with SADA. It's left the star in there, whereas here it's removed it entirely, but it's, it's left a bit of destruction that would need to be rectified in Photoshop as part of post-processing. Starnet++ also struggled with the star cluster on, on um, NGC 6910, um, which is above SADA in this representation, but it was successfully removed by ABP. Um, so it's, it's done pretty much similar jobs, um, except where you have the brightest star. Uh, personally, I preferred the, the Astro Pixel Processor version because I can correct this and then add the star back in afterwards. So this one for me is a bit cleaner, uh, but either one of them are useful for, for, for um, post-processing. But I think the main thing was it was quick in Astro Pixel Processor. So this does not depend upon Starnet++, it's their own bespoke algorithm. And uh, I've also looked at the uh, CPU when running the Astro Pixel Processor process and it's not really using a lot of CPU either. So it's highly efficient uh, and uh, makes a big difference, especially if you've got an older machine. It could be a bit of a game changer for star removal. Okay, so that's star removal. I'm now going to go back to the original and I'm going to look at star reduction. So tick that off and now I've got some different options I can play with. Now, for the sake of this demo, I happen to have found that um, setting this area radius uh, to 1.5 for the images from my 94 EDPH telescope um, is a good setting. If I set it lower than that, you get halos around the stars. If you set it much higher than that, it, it, you, they start to look a bit fuzzy. Uh, so you might need to experiment with your data, but 1.5 works for me. And then let's say I, I want to aggressively reduce the stars by 50%. Uh, I can now just click the star reduction process and let it run. And there it is. Uh, quite a big difference between that and uh, the, uh, the original. Uh, there are some other sliders here that you can, you can play with. Uh, I think playing with them is the right thing to do. Uh, it's a bit difficult to explain uh, what they're actually doing, um, but if I go back to the reduced version, uh, I found that reducing the peak intensity to about 50% uh, uh, as well um, can get just a little bit sharper stars and uh, a little bit more reduction. So go back to show the original. That's the original and this is the uh, reduced version. So that's doing a pretty good job uh, and it's, it's reducing SADA as well. So you could do this on, if you're shooting with a mono camera like this, you could do it on your hydrogen, your oxygen, your sulfur before you combine them in the RGB combined tool. Um, you could potentially take them down a bit further so that if you then, when you're post-processing, in Photoshop uh, and increasing the saturation and, and the brightness, etc., you won't necessarily have to worry about the stars blowing out uh, too much. Um, or you can do a star uh, removed version, do your processing on the nebula, and then take the stars from a star reduced version uh, to put into put back into the image. Um, either way uh, would work. So this looks like it's going to be a promising addition to my workflow. Um, I'll be interesting to, interested to know what you guys think. Um, if you've got any comments or questions, then feel free to leave them uh, below. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Thanks very much and clear skies, everyone.